Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover a few important topics from the veterinary pathology subject. So, in today's session, we are going to cover some of the definitions which comes under introduction and some of the degenerative processes. So, here in this slide, we have all the important definitions. First, let us start with pathology. Pathology means discourse of a disease. The term pathology can be divided into pathos and logos. Pathos means disease and logos means discourse. And so, this can be defined as study of a disease. Next, homeostasis. Homeostasis means mechanism, mechanism by which the body is kept in equilibrium. The next is disease. Disease means any departure from the healthy state. Next, oncology. Oncology means study of tumors. Next is etiology. Etiology means study of causation of a disease. The next is predisposing cause. Predisposing cause are those factors which make the animal susceptible to a disease. And these are also known as remote distance or preparatory causes. The next one is exciting causes. Exciting causes are also known as proximate, determi determining, immediate or direct causes. Okay, next is pathogenesis. Pathogenesis means the mechanism by which uh, the cause produces the disease. Here the cause is nothing but the agent. Next is symptoms or signs. Symptoms or signs are nothing but outward manifestation of a disease. Next are the lesions. Lesions means alterations in alterations in the structures which are detectable either microscopically or macroscopically. So, those lesions which are characteristic of a disease are known as pathognomonic lesions. So, the next definition is diagnosis. Diagnosis means determination of nature of a disease. Next is incubation period. Incubation period means time period between action of a cause and disease manifestation. It may vary from few days to years. In case of uh, render pest, the incubation period is up is from 4 to 9 days. Whereas in chronic diseases such as John's disease, it may, it may be up to some years. Next is course of disease. Course of disease is nothing but the time period through which a series of changes that are characteristic to a particular disease they pass through the ultimate end. Next is prognosis. Prognosis is nothing but outcome of a disease. Next is morbidity. Morbidity means percentage of exposed animals that gets affected. So here for example a herd of 100 animals are exposed to some X virus infection. If 50% of the animals suffer, here the morbidity is 50%. Next is mortality. Mortality means uh, disease. Mortality means percentage of deaths among the animals affected. So out of total animals affected, how many animals are dead? So here morbidity would be out of animals exposed, how many animals are affected? Whereas mortality means out of animals affected, how many animals are dead? Here are two important points. Disease with high morbidity and no, low mortality. So the examples are FMD and vaccinia. And next, the disease with low morbidity, that is low spread rate and high mortality, high death rate. It is mucosal disease. So next we have autopsy or necropsy. Autopsy or necropsy means cut open a carcass. So we have two different terms here, autopsy and necropsy. Autopsy is generally used for human terms and necropsy is for animal carcasses. Next one is biopsy. Biopsy means examination of a tissue received from living animal. So the basic difference between biopsy and autopsy or necropsy is biopsy is from live animal. Autopsy or necropsy is from a dead carcass. Next is predisposing factors. As we, as we have already discussed, uh, predisposing causes means the factors which make the animals more susceptible to a disease. So, these predisposing factors, they may be internal or abnormal constitutional factors. So, here under these predisposing factors, we have lethal characters and sublethal characters. So, in the lethal characters, these are nothing but they are inherited and they ultimately cause death of the 
the animal. Whereas sublethal characters are inherited, they just affect the bodily functions, but they do not cause any death in the animal. So the example for lethal characters include atresia collar in horses and parrot beak in cattle. They ultimately cause death. Whereas the sublethal characters, they just affect the bodily functions. So the example are uh, infertility and scrotal hernia in pigs. Next is uh, these are non-genetic or and they are non-inherited defects. So the first one is anomalies. Anomalies are nothing but developmental defect which affects an organ or a body part. So under these anomalies we have agenesis or aplasia. Agenesis or aplasia means complete absence. Hypoplasia. Hypoplasia is nothing but reduction in size. Atresia. Atresia is closure of a lumen of a hollow organ or a duct. Okay. Uh, next is horseshoe kidney. Horseshoe kidney is also known as ren arcuatus. Means it is a fusion of paired organs. So this is also an anomaly. So in uh, non-genetic or non-inherited defects of predisposing factors, we have genus, breed, age, sex and color which are predisposing factors. So in this I have enlisted all the important points. So this point is very important. Uh, in bulldogs, brain tumor is very common and strangles disease is more common in young horses. Okay. Similarly, CD is more common in pups. Grey horses suffer more from malignant melanoma and white skinned animals are more prone to photodynamic diseases and again these two points are very very important disease due to decreased atmospheric pressure disket disease this is due to increased atmospheric pressure is Kaysen's disease so at higher altitudes we have decreased atmospheric pressure where we see this brisket disease and this increased atmospheric pressure is uh, where the divers dive into deep seas there we see this Kaysen's disease and the next point is the vagina is kept free from pathogenic organisms by lactobacillus which is the Doderlin bacillus species. So next we have the important topic which is very important for the pigs. It is disturbances of protein metabolism. In this we have first parenchymatous degeneration or cloudy swelling or albuminous degeneration. So here we get bits like uh, parenchymatous degeneration is also known as. So uh, the answer would be cloudy swelling or albuminous degeneration. This degeneration is the earliest degeneration. Okay. There is uh, alteration in physical states of the cell. So this is very important. What are the factors which causes this parenchymatous degeneration? Those would be hypoxia and toxins. Okay. And the affected organs appear as parboiled appearance. So this is very very important. Organs are swollen and they have parboiled appearance. Okay, and the cells show ground glass appearance. So here the uh, cell organelle mitochondria is affected, and as a result, there is increased accumulation of sodium ions. So this results in swelling. So the next one is hydrobic degeneration. In this, the cytoplasm has one or two vacuums. So the very important point under this is the example for hydrobic degeneration. These are blisters, vesicles in pox and FMD. Okay, next is hyaline degeneration. In hyaline degeneration, we have three types. Connective tissue hyaline, epithelial hyaline and muscle hyaline. First, let us have a look at connective tissue hyaline. So, the examples under this connective tissue hyaline, the important ones are arteriosclerosis and scar tissue. So, the next one is epithelial hyaline. Uh, one of the classical example for epithelial hyaline is stratum convum. But this stratum convum of the skin is physiological. So the pathological condition is hyperkeratosis. That is excessive keratinization of the skin which is seen in vitamin A deficiency which is again very important. Uh, this is also seen. So this condition is also seen in corpora amylacea. This corpora amylacea is commonly uh, uh, appear as the con concentric layers of hyalinized epithelial cells in prostate gland. So this corpora amylacea is seen in prostate glands. So this stains uh, with iodine, same like a starch. Okay. This epithelial hyaline is also seen in diabetic cells of Langerhans. Okay. 
Next is muscle hyaline. Muscle hyaline. In muscle hyaline, the affected muscle fibers they appear as homogeneous glassy material, and they undergo so-called degeneration called Jenkers degeneration. Some of the examples of the important muscles undergoing this degeneration are rectus abdominis in typhoid, uh, equine azoturia, white muscle disease in calves, stiff lamb disease in lambs, and uh, those muscles undergoing this degeneration, they have appearance like fish flesh and they all lose their fibrillar stain. Okay. The causes of this degeneration are hypoxia, anaphylaxis and tumors. So the next one is mucinous degeneration. So under normal conditions, this mucus or mucin is secreted by cuboidal or columnar cells. But under pathological conditions, uh, the epithelial cells, they secrete excess amount of this mucus or mucin along with they undergo some degenerative changes. Here, the important point is uh, the mucus is precipitated by acetic acid. Okay. And the other important points are staining. Staining is very, very important. So, this mucus stains blue with hematoxylin, purplish red with pass, and again blue with alcyon blue. So, here we have another important point that is pseudomucin. So, what is the difference between this mucus and pseudomucin? So, this pseudomucin is uh, secreted by this cystadenoma of the ovary. Okay. And the difference between this mucus and muc pseudomucin is that the pseudomucin it stains pink with eosin and it is not precipitated by acetic acid which is again very very important. The next type of degeneration is mucoid degeneration or myxomatous degeneration. In fetuses, the connective tissue cells, they produce some mucin-like glycoprotein which is generally not present in adults. So, if this substance is present in adults, then the tissue is said to undergo this mucoid degeneration or myxomatous degeneration. So, under this, we have three important conditions. First is neoplasms. Neo in neoplasms, uh, uh, Mucoid degeneration is generally found in this myxoma or myxosarcoma and in which the cells appear as stellate. Stellate means star-like and they have long branching processes. The next one is malnutrition and next is myxedema. And the next degeneration is amyloid degeneration or amyloid infiltration or waxy degeneration. Here amyloid means it is a globulin along with sulfated polysaccharide. This amyloid degeneration is very very common in horses and dogs. So in horses which are used for production of anti-sera, uh, we have antibody and antigen reaction. So here we see this amyloid infiltration or amyloid degeneration. Generally amyloidosis means proliferation of protein producing cell. This amyloid is nothing but it is a type of protein. So, as we have discussed, amyloid is nothing but it is a type of protein which is alpha globulin. So, this amyloidosis, plain amyloidosis is important in birds which is generally seen in TB. It is important. So, the most affected organs under this amyloid infiltration are liver, spleen and kidney. First, let us have a look at spleen. In spleen, we have two conditions which is sagospleen and bacon spleen. This sagospleen is also known as focal, which is very common. So, here uh, there is deposits around the central arteries of Malfigian corpuscles. They appear as grains of boiled sago. So, this condition is known as sagospleen. The next one is back and spleen. This back and spleen is rare and it is diffuse. Okay. So, the connective tissue here, the deposits are seen around the connective tissue of the sinuses and reticulum pulp. Here, the organ appears as enlarged. So, and the infiltration is more diffuse. Here, the infiltration is focal, whereas here, the infiltration is more diffused. Here the affected kidney shows spotty appearance and in amyloid infiltration the staining topic is very very important. So with iodine it stains mahogany brown. With one with iodine and 1% H2SO4 it stains blue or black. With methyl violet it stains metachromatic. So the amyloid stains rose red in color and remaining is blue color. So very very important stain in amyloid is congo red which gives deep red color. 
so here the root of administration is iv next is weak iodine solution it will show brownish spots the next degeneration is fibrinoid degeneration so in fibrinoid degeneration in man is uh, some of the diseases collectively known as collagen disease